It was the threat of widespread violence that led to Haiti's planned election being called off, but this is now a nation in limbo. Polling stations have been set ablaze across the country, with many fearing Haiti is heading towards a crisis that threatens to destabilize an already fragile nation. So you think it's going to be a struggle? Yes, but we will, we will fight. We are the fighters. Samuel Madistan was running for president. He's now part of a group of former candidates known as the G8, who've been calling for sweeping change amid accusations of fraud and voting irregularities. He's happy that the presidential runoff has been postponed, but says Haiti has some serious challenges ahead. I have a good feeling. We made a big step in the right direction, but it is not the end. We still have a very long way to go because this fight is a lot more complicated than people think. But leadership struggles aside, the people of Haiti are growing increasingly impatient with the entire electoral process. <laughs> Student and musician Emmanuel Dargan told us he's rapidly losing hope for Haiti. He tells us most here live in inhumane conditions. It's an opinion widely held on the streets of Port-au-Prince. Other observers don't see an easy way out of Haiti's political impasse. According to the Constitution, President Martelly has to be out of office by the beginning of February. The time frame gives those in power little time to act decisively. We have less than two weeks until February 7, and there is no way to have another election before then. So it will be up to the parliament and the relevant political parties to agree on a transitional government. The transition. Elections have never been an easy thing in Haiti, but for the past decade this country has enjoyed relative political stability. But all that has slowly begun to unravel in the past few months. But perhaps the most important thing for the future of this country is that its next leader has legitimacy. There is more at stake here than a smooth handover of power. Haiti is still struggling to recover from a devastating earthquake. Poverty and unemployment are rampant. If its leaders can't run what its people see as free and fair elections, it's this nation's 50 million people who may ultimately pay the price. Andy Gallagher, Al Jazeera, Port-au-Prince, Haiti.